Welcome to the Microsoft Launch Program. I'm Alan Taylor from Inc. Radio. We're celebrating the National Entrepreneurship Week presented by Microsoft. I'm Alan Taylor and that is Scott Duffy. He is the guy that wrote the book, Launch. Scott, I've been hearing about this man for a long time. Greg Reed, best-selling author, speaker, filmmaker, founder of The Secret Knock. What is The Secret Knock? Well, we're a <laughs> private invite only organization. I'm not invited, I don't know the knock. <laughs> well, you gotta know the knock, baby. <laughs> so it's funny, uh, years ago I started on a journey interviewing the most powerful and influential people of our generation. And people kept asking, how can I meet your friends? So I started an event called Secret Knock where you literally had to know a secret knock to get in. And from there it grew in my living room to now a standing room only Forbes uh, listed must attend event for entrepreneurs wow. worldwide. Well, wow. wait, let's stick there for a second. Forbes ranks the Secret Knock one of the top three events in the world that entrepreneurs must attend. It seems like so many of these uh, events, you got to learn from coaches and teachers and authors. Right. And I said, wouldn't it be neat to have an establishment where you learn from the horse's mouth that people have actually done what they're teaching about? Right. So if you want to start a nonprofit, we bring in the founder of Make-A-Wish Foundation and talks about how to do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to start a, you know, a new clothing line, the founder of Ugga Boots, uh, an invention, the guy who invented the credit card. And what happens is these people can speak from experience and give you counsel rather than just opinion. What's the difference? Well, it's interesting. One of the greatest interviews I ever did was with a gentleman named John Schwartz who invented mm -hmm. string theory. And he said, successful people seek counsel, but failures listen to opinion. He says, opinions based on ignorance, wow. lack of knowledge. Hold on. Let yes. that sink in for a minute. That hurt. Mm. Am I bleeding? <laughs> That's like a punch in the nose. There he goes. Well, it seems like so many people seek, you know, opinion, like their family, friends who've never done what they're going to do. Counsel is based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. People paved the way. If you've never written a book before and you go to a family friend, they're going to tell you every reason you'll fail. But if you go to Mark Victor Hansen who wrote Chicken Soup and sold 100 million copies, they'll say, hey, before you get started, it's not an easy task. Here's what you need to know, but give you counsel based on wisdom and knowledge. John Schwartz, if we would spend our activities only seeking counsel and ignoring people's opinion, that's a day your life would change. So instead of saying, what do you think? You say, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting. Right? Greg, what is, you have a best-selling book, Stickability. What is Stickability? Yeah, one of the greatest interviews I ever did, I was watching 60 Minutes and I see this gentleman named Marty Cooper. Yeah. Now, you might know his name, but you know he invented the cellular phone. Oh. And I went to him and it says, you know, what is stickability? The power to persevere, what does that mean to you? And he said, stickability has to be parallel with flexibility. Mm. He says, if you're not willing to adapt and adjust, you'll get stuck. And he told the story about a spider monkey. He said, in the rainforest, there's a spider monkey. It's the most quick, nimble creature. You can't harpoon it, spear it, catch it. One hunter figured it out. He took a heavy log, drilled a tiny hole, left it at the base of the jungle, and dropped the peanut inside the hole. He'd walk away, and the monkey would smell the nut. Come down, reach his hand in, and his fist becomes so big he can't pull it back out and become anchored to the log. The hunter comes by an hour later and captures the elusive spider monkey. Now, all he's got to do is let go, but that monkey thinks that's nutrition and saving mm. him. But the moral is, are you holding on to your own nut right now? But it might be in the form of a bad job or that relationship or a car or a deal. Wow. And what we think is saving us, just like that monkey, could be leading to your own demise. Mm. Sometimes we have to have the courage to simply let go so we can live to fight another day. Didn't Kenny Roger write a song? You got to know when to hold him and know when to fold him. I've also, I've also seen that commercial. Yes. <laughs> you, you know, one of the things that entrepreneurs tend to do is they plan, plan, plan without taking action. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Another gentleman I guess, kind of set me up on a t-ball on that one. Thank you very much. Uh, when I was going on the journey, I had a chance to sit down with Truett Cathy, the founder of Chick Fil A restaurants. And he was a billionaire. And at the time, I wasn't a billionaire. I'm still working toward it. And I went to him and I said, I want to be a billionaire like you. What do I do differently? And he looks at me and said, don't plan. Hmm. <laughs> what? That goes against everything we're ever taught. Wait a minute. Like, now every... it's coming back around to me again. So I'm feeling better now. Exactly. <laughs> he says, don't plan. I go, how, how is that possible? He goes, last year, you had a lot of plans. I go, yeah. He goes, how did that work out for you? Mm. And he said, you might have a goal that you hit from time to time, but how it came to fruition, I guarantee didn't go as expected. Mm. He goes, look for unexpected opportunity and then capitalize on it. So what do you mean? He says, well, if I'm at my house and I want to get to the end of the street and that's my goal, I have to get off my backside, take action and move towards that destination. A planner is going to plan every step where they're going to pause and take a break. I'm looking for opportunity. Did a kid leave a skateboard or a bicycle out? 
to make my journey short. Mm -hmm. If I get lucky, I'll wave down a neighbor driving by and hitch a ride to the end of the street. He goes, either way, I'll get to my goal, mm -hmm. to my destination. I'm just not caught up in exactly how it has to happen. But Greg, if you steal that skateboard or bicycle, you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Borrow. That's all how you look at it, right? Uh, you know, another thing that entrepreneurs do is they fail to either get started or they start and stop because mm. they think that they don't have all of the resources that they need. Right. And there's this belief that you, you got to wait before you jump in. What, what have you found? You know, it's interesting. One of the biggest our chapters of Think and Grow Rich, the Bible of Personal Development, was the six ghosts of fear. Mm. And they talk about fear in a very interesting way. You know that old coffee mug at Disneyland that says, you know, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Well, here's the big thing. What would you do if you didn't care what other people thought? Mm. Because we realize that the fear of criticism is what holds most people back. Wow. It's not the money, it's not the resources, it's what other people will think. And I realize that all successful people do something when they face their fears, it's called a duck dive. Mm. Now, I live on the beach in La Jolla, California, and I notice these surfers. And you can also notice the newbies that are going out there. Because a new person, when they see a big wave coming up, they'll hold on to that board because they get scared, and the wave will crush them and push them to the bottom and break that board in half. Mm. But a good surfer does a duck dive. They take the tip of the board, and they go right into the belly of the wave and pop back in the side. They hardly even get wet. Right. And I realize that successful people, you know, you're scared, I'm scared, we're all scared. But successful people do it anyway. They face their fear rather than run from it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I just got to breathe for a minute after all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Greg, I, I, you've been telling me about Greg for so long. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. And it's all these relationships and these conversations you've mm. had with entrepreneurs, with business leaders, with people that have done it yes. and not faked it. Because you can't fake success. Correct. You know, one, one of the things that happens, you're an entrepreneur and, and you have a business and you go through your day-to-day -day challenges and your day-to-day -day struggle. And you hear names like Ugg Boots, right, who you mentioned, and, and, and this brand and that brand, all these successful brands. And, and you feel like you don't necessarily relate mm. because you haven't gone through the, you know, they must not have gone through the same problems that you're going through today. What have you found interviewing like the most successful people out there? Well, one of my favorite ones, the first one I ever did was a guy named Dave Linegar. Now, no one knows his name, but you probably know his company. Uh, he wanted to get into real estate back in the 70s. I says, was it hard? He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, I wanted to quit every day, but I couldn't because I knew in my heart I was on something special. He goes, but for two years, every phone call that came in was from a bill collector. Mm -hmm. I was so embarrassed when the phone would ring, I'd run across the hall and pick it up so my secretary wasn't put on the spot. The third year, they threw me in jail, calling me a fraud and a liar. Wow. I said, what'd you do? He says, well, I took my attitude from trying to prove them wrong to something more important and just prove myself right. I knew I wasn't what they were making me out to be. I had the courage to pick up the phone and call the bill collector back. I said, look, I'll be honest. I don't got 50 grand I owe you, but I got 50 bucks. I'll send it to you with a promise I won't quit. Don't give up on me. Mm. He says, I called every bill collector every month until the fourth year. Someone finally believed in them and bought the first franchise called Remax Real Estate. Wow. wow. My brother's a Remax realtor, <laughs> which is great, right? Yeah. yeah. He wow. says, I'm nothing. He goes, but how many people's lives were changed because I wouldn't quit? How do we know someone watching this right now isn't about to give up on their own dream? Because mm, yeah. maybe Visa's calling them on the other line. You know, it's interesting, too, because I think all of us have had the bill collectors. Yeah. And I've had to face that myself earlier in life when I had four children. And I remember saying one time to this one person who was very talkative, and I said, look, I won't quit until I'm dead. And I'm very healthy, I'm very alive, I'm gonna keep going. And I remember knowing inside of my heart that I just was not gonna give up. I couldn't give up, I have a family, I have a wife. And you know what, things turn around. And interestingly enough, everything that I had to get rid of and, and give away to pay my bills has come back tenfold. Mm. Mm. I, I got, so it reminds me of Ron Glosser, a gentleman who ran Hershey. I, I, I chalk and I said, you know, what do successful people do than others? And he says, successful people never make their major life-changing decision while in a valley. I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, people make their major life-changing decision when they get sick, laid off, divorced, go bankrupt. How can you make a positive life-changing decision at your lowest point? He so says, true. It's right. so true. He says, but that's what it is. Goes, what you do is everything's cyclical. You have up and a down. So it's when you have a down, you ride the storm to have a little bit of a rise, a little bit of wind in your sail, a little giddy up in your step. Yeah. He goes, if you can make a decision from that point of view when things start going your way, you'll save over 10 years of your life on this planet. Wow. 
from having to go back and correct the wrong choices because you made them based at your lowest point. You know what happens though? I mean, as an entrepreneur, you know, things maybe don't aren't going your way and you get frustrated and you start to equate your value with, you know, it negatively as a result of what's going on and the circumstances mm -hmm. in your business. And um, how do you get out of that? Yeah, I went through that myself. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 there's a thing called the bad case of the one size, meaning I'm going to take action once I get the kids out of house, you know, once mm -hmm. I get the big break. But we also have a thing called the Eustas. Like, <laughs> I used to have a big house. So I used you know? to could. Exactly. I used to have a nicer <laughs> car, right? Greg, Greg, well, I used Greg, to have hair. What is it? The older we get, the better we used to be. The right? better we used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when I, when I was going through my journey, I had a chance to meet with this uh, woman named Jen V. F. Boss who started Pink Magazine. Mm. And I went to her at my lowest point. And I said, I feel like such a failure. I used to have this multi million dollar house, I used to have all this fancy stuff. And she looked at me and she said, Never let your mistakes. Setbacks or circumstances determine your value as a person. I said, well, that's easy for you to say because you're rich. And she pulled out a $100 bill. I, I'm not rich like her, but I'll pull out this for the sake of doing it. And I remember she looked at this and she pulled it out. She goes, here, do you want this? I go, yeah, I could use that money. She goes, there you go, crumpled up. She goes, here, do you still want it? I go, absolutely. I could use a couple bucks right now. She throws it on the ground, steps on it like a cigar butt. She goes, here, do you still want that piece of paper? And I go, Humbly, I don't even know how I'm gonna get a taxi ride back to the airport. I could really use that. Mm. She goes, and why is in life when you get beaten, when you get kicked, when you get crumpled, thrown to the ground and stepped on, you think your value as a person changes? Yeah. Mm. Tell us more about <laughs> stickability. You know, stickability truly is the power to persevere. I had an opportunity to meet everyone from the founder of Make-A-Wish to all these amazing people. When you talk about Ugg Boots, yeah. he's in my latest book, it's Thoughts Are Things. Mm. And you know, it was one of the greatest messages, you know, he'll tell it a little bit different than I, but I'm gonna steal his line. Basically he says, you got to learn to listen to your audience as an entrepreneur. Mm. He says, when Ugg Boots were rocking and rolling, he, they started making some dough. And they took out these full page ads in the local surfer magazine. And he got excited because he got these hot models to wear the boots, but all of a sudden sales just went flat. But they kept spending money and his sales went flat, couldn't figure it out. One day he went to a surf shop and he was sitting out front, look at this magazine and these little surfer kids came walking out, 12, 13 years old and said, hey guys, look at this. Would you buy these boots? They go, not a chance. He goes, what are you talking about? These are for you. And they said, no, look at that model. She's all perfect. That's mm -hmm. us. We're beach rats. And went, aha. Hired those same kids, the model, the Ugg boots, and came out the next ad. <laughs> I love and it. And next thing you know, people so started awesome. buying them off. Is it so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you got to listen to your own client yeah. base to tell you exactly right. what you need. Right. Who is the most interesting person that you've interviewed so far in your career? You know, it's like picking your favorite child, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a really kind of a tough you have one. One though that stands out. Yeah, you know, out of all of them, especially lately, is Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple Computers. Mm. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. I said, "How did you and Steve have so much success in your life?" Yeah. And he says, "We embraced our lack." You know, why he goes, "We embrace what we did not have." Most entrepreneurs run out, and they're so fearful they run from it. He goes, mm. "We embraced it." Mm. He said, "When microchips came out, they were so expensive we could only afford one chip." Hewer Packard was rich. They could go from point A to point B with 20 chips because they had all the money of God. Mm -hmm. He says, so I had to take a five away and get it to work and take away another five and get it to work till finally we could go from point A to point B using our one chip. He goes, we weren't trying to be cool or slick or innovative. Just we could only afford money. one. <laughs> he goes, but by embracing that as an opportunity, I found the shortest, cleanest path and changed the way people do personal computing for the rest of the world, yeah. for the rest of your life. By embracing the lack. Where yeah. would you be right now in your own world if you stopped looking at your greatest obstacle as perhaps a blessing in disguise? It's so interesting how our whole world changed because mm. of the lack of this, yeah. but it actually led to lots of this. That's right, that's right. It also seems from the people that you, you, you've talked about today that you've been so successful oh, yeah. over time, so successful, but did any of them ever get close to quitting and just <laughs> like like throwing it all in? Right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, one of the common denominators, it was interesting, a lot of them, and I won't name names, but mm -hmm. a lot of them would say, there's a time they went, wanted to go to the bank, cash out all the money, gas up the car and just take out. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. And I went, wow, that's a common denominator that we all kind of run to this uh, wall. Yeah. But 100% of them stopped and said, that is an option, but it's not mine. Yeah. Mm. And they decided to turn the car around and go back home. And it's do always stopped. darkest before the dawn. Exactly. Mm, yeah. They duck dive towards their fears. Yeah. And by embracing that, and it's really funny, you know, fear's greatest enemy is action. 
And usually when we handle mm -hmm. it, things go away. My mentor, David Corbin, a sure. friend of ours, sure. has a book out, it's called Illuminate. And the concept is, there's these dancing bears back in the day. It says, you gotta accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. He yeah. says, that's wrong. Accentuate the positive and illuminate the negative. He goes, mm. if you got a big pimple and you got a first date, you knock on the door and say, let's get this out of the way. Kilimanjaro right here. So you <laughs> laugh about it, you don't have to hide it for the rest of the night. Right. Same thing in business. Just recently, I had one of my books uh, hit bestseller. It was pretty cool, but one person said two words, it sucks. And I went, oh my gosh, I go, my friends and family and f all my fans are gonna see this, what do I do? And I went, Dave Corbin, Illuminate. So I sent an email out to 35,000 people and said, hey, my book seems to be a hit, 148 people love it, one guy says it sucks. Here's the link, what do you think? It became a bestseller again overnight. <laughs> <laughs> because all of a sudden they went there and all my fans and everyone else started illuminating and you know, giving this guy a hard time. I didn't even need to. I'll bet that was the best lemonade you ever made. <laughs> right? Make lemonade out of lemons. I love that. Greg, tell us more about Secret Knock. Well, Secret Knock is kind of a neat little thing. So we actually pre-screen each and every person that comes. So right. just because you want to give us a bunch of money, you can't go. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is you have to go through an interview process. So if you got a tinfoil hat or talk to dead aliens to your cat, you're probably mm -hmm. not coming to my type of event, right? And the whole idea is to surround ourselves with positive, like-minded yeah. people. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a billionaire, you don't have to be a multi-millionaire, but you have to have the mindset that you're ready for more. It seems like great entrepreneurs, not the new people, but the people they start a bagel shop the first year and everyone says they're crazy. Well, the third year, they prove themselves right, but now they wanna go and take a quantum leap, but they don't know how, it's that association. We offer that association where they literally have the people around them. to cut to the front of the line. Yeah. Hang out with the people who are doing what you want to do. That one connection can change your life. Right. So it's where you want to go, not where you are today. Correct. That's and sometimes we, we realize it's kind of like in a you know a nightclub. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that long line of people outside and then one person's got the velvet rope and can let you in. Mm -hmm. That's what Secret Knock is. And what we do is open up the velvet rope so you can hang out with these world thought leaders, knees to knees, not just walk them on stage, but have a you know a cocktail with them or have mm -hmm. a lunch and pick their brain because that's where success comes from. It's interesting. You just said where you want to go, yeah. not where you are right now. Yeah. And I've taken a lot of driving schools. I'm a big car guy. And the first yeah. thing they teach you is where your eyes are looking is where you're going to go. And if you're looking at the wall, you're going to go right into the wall. Mm -hmm. So look where you want to go because at the end of the day, that's where you're going to go. And surround yourself with people that are already there. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, wow. I, I agree to that one. It's interesting. To get what you want, surround yourself with people who are already getting those results. My wife and I, you know, a couple years ago went to Africa and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, speaking of Kilimanjaro, and she's the first Filipino woman in history to do it. Mm -hmm. And people said, how did you go from the beaches of La Jolla to the roof of Africa? And the answer is, I did not hire surfer kids to take me up the mountain. I found the Sherpa that have climbed it five, 600 times. Wherever they put their boot print, I put my boot print. Mm -hmm. I didn't reinvent the wheel. I knew they'd make it to the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing in life, same thing in business. Mm -hmm. Unbelievably good advice from uh, Greg Reed. Greg, where, where can people find out more about you? Go to secretknock.co. We mm. left the M off. You know, we just made a website, but we left the M so no one could find us. Yeah. It's only for <laughs> private invite only. Mm -hmm. And fill it out. If you think you make a good fit for us, uh, we'll get back to you and bring in. Awesome. I, I think also... Uh, also, Thoughts or Things, is that a recent book you wrote? Yeah, yeah. Bob Proctor, you might know him from The Secret. He and I, I co-authored yeah. it together. It's called Think and Grow Rich, Thoughts or Things. And it was interesting, that one we had to interview everyone from Holocaust survivors to the founder of JetBlue Airlines, from the mother of holistic medicine, to all these amazing people. And we realized that thoughts are not things. It's thoughts backed by action. Mm. Things. If thoughts mm. were things, yeah. That'd be a slice of pizza because I'm thinking about lunch right now. <laughs> but when I leave here and I go go to Luigi's and get a slice of pizza, it becomes a reality because it's the action behind the attraction that makes your dream come true. Hashtag awesome. MSFT launch. Uh, again, this is a Microsoft launch program. And Scott Duffy, I got to tell you, all your friends are A-OK. -okay. Right here. This Absolutely. is the man right here. Greg Reed. <laughs> I'm Alan Taylor with Scott Duffy. There's more of the Microsoft launch program. Uh, program coming. So uh, keep watching, celebrating the National Entrepreneurship Week presented by Microsoft.